Hi, my name is Jeffrey. I want you to join me on my badminton journey to become a better player by analyzing my videos and learning from watching Lynette's matches. Let's first start with the game. What do you think I'm doing wrong in these clips, and what is Linda doing right? Was that too fast? Let's go slower. Okay, stop. Do you see the difference yet? So let's be honest here. There are at least 50 differences, but in this video, I want to specifically focus on my forehand to the forehand back corner. Comparing side by side, it becomes easier to see what I was doing wrong. The first thing I noticed was that my upper body wasn't turned enough. You can actually see that the angle of our legs are pretty similar. They're both facing towards the forehand front corner as we're moving towards the forehand back corner, but the key difference is that my upper body points in the same direction as my feet, while Lundan's upper body is rotated a bit more. His lower body is facing the forehand front corner, but his upper body is perpendicular to the sideline. I imagine that this gives him more room to hit his shots and makes him more deceptive. The second thing I saw was that my wrist was bent back too much. My forearm would go outward and then my wrist would go back inward, causing this almost 90 degree angle to form between my forearm and my racket. In comparison, there isn't much angle in Lindan's case as it's pretty much a straight line. On a side note, my form isn't bad, it's still deceptive, and I can hit all the shots that I want, and I'm pretty consistent. There's definitely the argument that as long as your form has these qualities, it doesn't matter how you hit it. Even the pros have varying forms that they use to hit the bird. My response to that is, you're right, but I feel that having Lenan's form would make my shot more efficient, even more deceptive, and even more consistent. And at the end of the day, I also think Lenan's form just looks a lot better. At this point, I don't play badminton just to win. I play because it feels a bit like an art, and having Lindan's form is the ideal masterpiece that I want to paint. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of cheesy. So I actually did drills and practices for four weeks, and through this process, I pieced together the right drills that I should be doing and made discoveries on the way. Discoveries I didn't know about the first time I analyzed, and that was really exciting because I felt that I was actually finding out new things I didn't know before and actually getting closer and closer to hitting like Lindan. Change takes a lot of time though, so after 4 weeks, my journey still only begun. I made progress, but I still have a lot to go before I can say that I'm hitting like Lindan. I'll keep it short in this video, but I highly recommend you watch my full journey as I try to improve on my form. I'll leave a link in the description and also put something here that you can tap. So anyway, which drills did I do to practice this? The first drill is to stand in your forehand back corner and hit straight drops without moving. This is so you can work on your form without the added variable of getting to that position. After all, how can you expect to hit a shot the way you want while moving when you can't even do it while standing? After doing a few sets of straight drops, you can also try doing cross court drops. After you're comfortable with your form, which to be honest takes a really really long time, you can now try to add some movement. The first drill you could do is to move between your forehand front corner and your forehand back corner, and just do straight drops. This can be an order first to get you used to it, and then you can start doing it at random. The thing you're working on is the form in the forehand back corner, so have your friend net a bit farther and lift a bit higher. And remember, the goal of this drill is to keep your form while moving. Aside from working on your straight drop, you can also work on your cross court drop. So this is also pretty similar where instead of moving from your forehand back to your forehand front, you move from your forehand back to your backhand front. I think after doing those drills, then you can also try keeping the same four when doing clears, when doing drives, etc. Keep in mind that this is a long process and would definitely take many iterations before it truly becomes muscle memory. It takes time to correct bad habits and ingrain good habits. When doing these drills, I think it is extremely helpful if you record and review your recordings. You might watch the pros and think that you're moving and hitting like them, but you might be fairly surprised when you watch your own recordings. Even when I was doing these drills to work on my form and to make this video, I kept reverting to my old form without even realizing, because it felt so natural. And it was only because I was able to watch my videos right after the drill that I was able to catch myself. Obviously, having a coach give you real-time feedback would be the most ideal, but not everyone can afford private coaching and there's a sense of joy when you figure out something yourself and improve by your own efforts. When doing these drills, also keep in mind to pull back your elbow all the way. Also, when you're going to your ready position, relax your wrist and don't pull it back. Try to keep it straight. Also, 
Always have your upper body turned facing the sidelines when approaching the bird. Another thing I figured out along the way is to lead the shot with your elbow. Your wrist will naturally bend back as your elbow moves up. It's been a really bad habit of mine to lead the shot with the wrist and then follow with the elbow. This caused my swing to be really big as my racket head would reach all the way back to my waist when it just needed to be at my shoulder blades. You can see in this clip. So how did I do? I feel like my hits are cleaner as when I hit, I'm meeting the bird with a flat racket face. The swing is also shorter which makes me feel like my swing would be more efficient and more deceptive. Since my wrist is also more relaxed and straighter than before, I also feel less tense. On a side note though, obviously since I'm still changing my form, my consistency isn't as good, but that's okay. I imagine that as I get used to this new form, I would get my consistency back and I would probably be even more consistent. And there you have it. This is basically a summary of the past four weeks when I try to improve my form to the forehand back corner. I hope you learned something. And if you have time, please check out the other video where I go more in depth on my journey to fix my form. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments. And please also consider subscribing to support the channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks.